Oh, yeah. Alright, so this is us three hours left, and apparently we should have gotten here a lot earlier because this line goes all the way over there. Probably some of these people have been here since, I don't know, 12. Hey guys, and today is a very special episode of 10 Years Later. This is basically the reason why I started the show, because today, July the 18th, 2008, we were given The Dark Knight. There are so many memories for this movie for me. Not just the experience of watching the film in the IMAX, not just the absolute amazing performance by Heath Ledger as the Joker, not the complete and utter intricacy, the complexity and the long-standing effect that this film has had on comic book films as a whole. This is one of my favorite films of all time for so many reasons, but the experience of watching this movie in theaters on opening midnight is an experience that I still remember because I still have the video for it. Sure. We'll be able to get into it. Oh yeah, we we uh we have our tickets. Oh okay. So what is that? Where's Batman? Where's Batman? Batman IMAX. Okay. Oh, sold out. Sold out. Sold out. Sold out. That one isn't sold out. Sweet. This is 17 year old me who with a bunch of friends went and saw the midnight release of the Dark Knight We had gotten the tickets about a few weeks earlier But as you'll see throughout the entire theater was sold out But not only that this is an experience that is gone now and that is waiting to get your seat in the movie theater Now there are still regular showings for certain films of big blockbusters But now at least for us Canadians up here with Cineplex you can choose where you're gonna sit before you go and see the movie so that whole sort of authenticity of actually getting to experience the wait for a movie is gone now now i know that i'm no real person to say people who went and saw star wars or harry potter or jurassic park all those movies that had big lineups back in you know when they had lineups still i think harry potter the deathly hollows is the last major film that really had a big midnight showing because now they don't do midnight showings for films anymore at least up here they don't and like i said you can pre-order your seats Oh, yeah, don't push. Go, go, go. Go, run, 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 people in front. Alright, let's go, let's go, let's go. Uh, no, 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 Experience that I had waiting to see that film, seeing it on the big IMAX screen. This was also a real introduction from Christopher Nolan of using IMAX cameras in a movie. Now we had had a few films here and there be premiered in the IMAX theater as well as regular theaters, one of them being 300, which was sort of setting the idea of putting films in the IMAX theater, but the Dark Knight, Christopher Nolan is the one who really came up with the idea of putting IMAX cameras into use for films and bringing that IMAX experience onto the big screen. He's done it with all of his movies except for Inception after The Dark Knight. The Inception, it wasn't possible because of how the film was made. But Interstellar, Dark Knight Rises, Dunkirk all utilize the IMAX camera. And we have to thank the man and Wally Pfister, his DOP, for giving us that because now other movies do that. Some cash in on the IMAX experience admittedly, but others like The Avengers, which was entirely filmed in digital IMAX camera, which was a new device made just in time for the movie to be developed. It's just another reason why I love going to see a movie in an IMAX theater. But as for The Dark Knight itself, pretty much say it all in my review, even though I'm a little bit weird sounding and a little odd here and there but that 17 year old me 
I gave this movie a 7 out of 7 when I saw it, and I still give it a 7 out of 7 now. It's a perfect movie. It's one of the best comic book movies ever made. It is one of the best movies in terms of an action thriller ever made. The pacing in this film is fantastic. I went and saw it six times in theaters, and I never found a scene where I could actually go to the bathroom. And that was on the sixth bloody time. I didn't want to miss anything. Of course, the Dark Knight Rises that followed did not meet the mantle of this film, but Nolan set a precedent that he'll probably never beat. Even if he went back to do another superhero movie, which he did with the Man of Steel in a sense, he'll never meet that. No one's going to meet that. The Dark Knight will stand here for the rest of time. It's going to stand there. It will be a forever memory in the rule of cinematic rule for making a comic book hero movie. But anyways, guys, that's my two cents about The Dark Knight and its 10th year anniversary. What do you guys remember about The Dark Knight? What do you guys remember about going to see a movie and a midnight showing where you actually had to sit around for three hours waiting to see the movie? What do you guys think about The Dark Knight and its legacy? Do you think it's ever going to be beat? And do you believe that it still deserves the status that it rightfully deserves? Anyways, guys, that's all for me. Thank you for watching this episode of 10 Years Later. I'll see you guys next time.